What's good, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Once again, you are tuning in to the new hotness in sports talk streaming. VJ said what I said, because I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. And if you don't like it, you know you can take your ass the other way. We're live right now on Infinity TV, man. VJ said what I said. I'm your host, VJ Vernon Husky, the big vanilla funny, the big vanilla poppy. With another episode today, man, of just some great sports talk. We got great topics. We'll touch on the divisional round that's coming up. We're going to talk about breaking news earlier that uh, yesterday where Antonio Pierce was finalizing a contract with the Las Vegas Raiders to become their head coach. And we'll touch on a little bit of college hoops because I haven't talked to you guys about some college hoops yet. And then we'll also talk some NBA because there's a player out there that I think needs to be traded right away. It might surprise you. But as always, we're going to start like we do every episode here on VJ Say What I Said with Word of the Day. And the word today is change. Now, so far, uh, uh, we, we had patience. And uh, last week, I, I think we had connection. This week, we got change. And the reason why I wanted to pick this word, because I think right now in sports, this is a time of change. This is the calendar part of the year where a lot of things change. Think about it. You have Black Monday, two Mondays ago, end of the NFL season. A lot of coaches get fired. What's going to happen you're going to start to interview a lot of coaches, a lot of interviews coming around, a lot of guys' name, names being thrown out there. There's a lot of change that's going to happen with some NFL franchises and with some college programs because you got some guys that walk away, take a bigger job, go to a bigger school, a lot of change. You got a lot of change also in the portal. Got a lot of kids transferring out, going to different schools, might want to go make some NIL money over here. A lot of change coming. But in life, there's also change. And with change, you can do one or two things. You can either adapt or you can perish. All change is not good, though. There's some good change. There's some bad change. I myself, because I like to talk about myself so much, instead of pointing the finger, my grandmother, Amory Spearman, always told me, before you start talking about other people, make sure you clean your house first before you start going and criticizing other people's house. So I talk about myself. About 18 years ago, I needed some change. I left Virginia. I got on the Greyhound bus with three duffel bags, Nike duffel bags full of clothes, and my clippers. I was going to come out to L.A., drive cross country, ride cross country on the Greyhound. Took like four buses, three and a half days. I was going to come to L.A. and I was going to do stand-up comedy. I was going to chase my comedy dreams, get into some film. I wanted to be an actor. I, I, I wanted to be a big movie star. When you get out here and you figure out some things that's going on in Hollywood, Cat Williams put us on to it. I said, okay, this may not be for me. I can do a little work here and there. I can do enough that will appease and please me. That was a change for me, leaving the East Coast, moving all the way to the West Coast, 3,000 miles. Didn't know one person here. Got off at a Greyhound bus station in downtown L.A., got into a cab, took me to Hollywood, checked into the Motel 6 on Hollywood and Ivar. And that's where I started the change in my life. And it was good. I started to have to really depend on living by myself, on my own, not having anybody around, no safety net, nowhere to really go to get a plate of food, go sleep on the sofa. So I was living in a hotel. It's a lot of change that came along with that. Getting into the comedy world out here in Los Angeles, it was a big change from the comedy world in the DMV. Standing in line auditioning, going to central casting to get professional headshots done and hopefully get called to, to appear at a set and do some extra work, which I did on some big films. That was a lot of change for me. But it was good change. I grew. I learned a lot more about myself. First of all, I matured more as a man because if I had stayed home, I probably would have been doing the same dumb young stuff that I was doing before that I had no business doing. The good book, the good word, y'all know what I'm talking about when it says a boy plays with, you know, his toys and childish things. But when a boy becomes a man, a man puts childish things away. That's change. That's a good type of change. I had to change when I left from here during the writer's strike in 08 and moved to Connecticut. Small little town called Bristol. Didn't know anybody up there either. Another form of change. Was no entertainment world, was no auditions, had to do comedy shows at hotel ballrooms and at bars in, in the city of Hartford in Connecticut. And I'm, I'm grateful for all of it. I'm grateful for all the fans out there, all the friends, all the people that still text me to this day. We comment, go back and forth on social media. They see VJ saying what I said. Also on the breaks, by the way, make sure y'all catch the breaks every day here. Fan of the television on YouTube. Say what I said, Saturday morning is 9 a.m. on YouTube, Pacific time, West Coast time. It was a lot of change for me, though. 
But that's how I started sports talk. I started sports talk by not having a lot of comedy stuff to do, not having a lot of acting work to do. I again had to change. That led me to meeting Mike Hill. That led me to Sirius Satellite Radio in New York City on the Scott Farrell show. That led me to Nutmeg TV, a local access, small operation, no money, but it led me to start my own TV show, VJs and Sportsman Like Conduct, where I ran it like sports reporters. We suited up, we set up a coffee table, we put four chairs around it, and me and some friends talked some sports. Required a lot of change, but that change was good. I had to change again when I left Connecticut and said, hold up, I'm not done in L.A. I'm not finished. I didn't complete what I wanted to complete in Los Angeles, and I felt like I failed. I wanted to go come back and restart and finish the job that I did before. When I came back out here, it was the same all over again. It was a lot of change. Didn't know anybody. Didn't have any friends out here. Had to get a job at a cell phone store because I had to get back in the comedy world. I had to figure out how I was going to get back into sports talk and keep my sports talk career going with radio and television. Change is good. Change can also be bad. There's times in my life where I've changed and I thought I was better for changing, but I was changing and doing bad things because I was fed up and I was sick of trying to be the, the good guy and sick of trying to live right and doing the right. Nice guys finish last, so I'm going to do this now. Those changes were bad. And then I had to change again to go back to the good and walk the good right path, which has led me here to Infinity Television, my own sports talk TV show, hosting on another day, my own sports talk radio show that I co-host over on Fox Sports Radio. It's been a lot of change in my life. I have two little ones walk, running around now, my four and my two-year-old, Journey and Cameron. It's a lot of change in my house. I don't get to sleep in anymore. It's a big change for me. When you got babies, and those of you out there that know when you got babies, you, it's not about your breakfast time. You get up when they're hungry. You got to change them when, they're, when, they, when they got the little stinky pull up on you. There's a lot of change in your life, but that's good change, though. I learned how to be a dad. I learned how to be an everyday dad. Pick my son up. Drop my son off. Pick my kids up from uh, my in-laws. And yeah, You got to move your schedule around. VJ, can you do this? Oh, got to oh, gotta check my kids. Got to check my kids' schedule. That's a big change for me, but it's been a great change for me, and I love it. We flip it over to sports. A lot of change going on right now, but there's some change that didn't happen that I think is good change. I told you guys, the Dallas Cowboys were not – Firing Mike McCarthy, that would be a bad change. When you fire your coach off of a playoff loss, you are resetting your franchise, in my opinion, back four to five seasons, you're setting your franchise back. They have some holes they need to fill. There's some different things that need to happen there. I get it. But you can't just put it all on the head coach. The head coach wasn't missing tackles and leaving Romeo Dobbs wide open in the middle of the field. I counted four times Jordan Love found him open after maneuvering and manipulating the pocket, buying himself some time. Micah Parsons couldn't touch that guy last week. But he found Romeo Dobbs open in the middle of the field. That's not Mike McCarthy's fault. Last time I checked, if there's a change that needs to be made, why are any of you guys going after Dan Quinn? That was his defense out there getting toasted like a slice of wheat bread on Sunday morning to put the side next to the bacon and eggs and cheese grits. That, he, that, that's what they were. That was Dan Quinn. That wasn't Mike McCarthy. That was a change that didn't need to happen. Now, there's some other changes that didn't need to happen there, but it wasn't the Mike McCarthy change. That wouldn't have been a good change. He might not have been the right hire before, but you don't double down on bad decisions. When you make a decision, you kind of kind of stick with it sometimes. We've all dated someone longer than we probably should have. Everybody has. But there's a time and a place for everything and for change. And that would have been a bad change. I'll give you another one. Sirianni with Philly. Okay, fire Sirianni. Who are you getting? I said last week, if you fire Mike McCarthy or Sirianni, you better damn well have a illegal, because it would be illegal, an illegal handshake, wink, wink, agreement for Jim Harbaugh, a.k.a. my man Jimmy Burgers. You better have him in tow. 
if you are going to fire one of those guys. Now, there's jobs he's interviewed for. He interviewed for the Atlanta Falcons. He's not taking that job. That feels like it's Belichick's job, which is really confusing to me, but we'll get into that as we talk more about change. He's also interviewed out here in Los Angeles for the Chargers job. That was on Monday. We're sitting here at the weekend, and he's still not, he's still not hired there. I'm not sure that that job as, is as juicy as a lot of people want to make it sound, especially a lot of Los Angeles sports media. Oh, it's the best job available, is it? Have you lived in Los Angeles? Have you lived in California? Have you seen the state tax here? The Chargers can't draw it home. They, the running joke is they play 17 road games. The visiting teams come here. San Francisco, the Raiders, the, the Broncos, they come here and take over SoFi Stadium. You think it's bad in Miami when the Buffalo Bills play down there? And I can explain that, too. A lot of people in western New York, they, they vacation to Florida in the wintertime to get away from the cold. So they're Bills fans that live down in South Florida. Trust me, it's not all those fans traveling down to Miami, Miami, excuse me, for all my Cubano brothers and sisters back in Miami. It's not, they don't, they don't travel all down in Miami. There's a lot of New York Jets and a lot of Buffalo Bills fans that already are vacationing in the colder months in the year from up north, down south. That's how they take over the stadiums. That's not the case in Los Angeles. It's just as nice as San Francisco. I did, the, the, the Cardinals came to play here. It half, the, half the stadium was filled. Half the stadium was filled with Cardinal fans. It's nice in Arizona. They're not escaping. They don't live here. They traveled up here for the game. So you don't even have a home game. They're so over the cap right now. There's a change that needs to happen there, but where's it going to come from? Your running back wants out. Your best receiver's a little long in the tooth. And whether you like Justin Herbert, I'm kind of still up in the air on the guy as far as he can win you a Super Bowl. Can he throw for a lot of yards, throw a lot of touchdowns? Yeah. Can he win you a Super Bowl? I don't know. I'm not sure. He can. He hasn't won a playoff game yet. And didn't finish this year. There's a change that needs to happen there, but I'm not sure that Harbaugh would be the change that would need to happen there because I think Washington's a better job. High draft pick, crazy money, new ownership. The ownership here in L.A., eh, for the Chargers, eh. Even the local media will tell you that. I don't know if that job is so great. I don't know if that's the change you want in your life is to leave college and come coach the Chargers. But the Dallas Cowboys made the right call here. Whether people want to agree with that or not, you can't make that type of change right now. Figure out what the problems are. Run it back. Now, I will say this. If they get eliminated or have a down year last year to get eliminated early or they have a down year next year, I would then look to probably move off of McCarthy. Another coaching change here, breaking news earlier today, is that um, the Raiders are finalizing the deal for Antonio Pierce. That's a great change that's happening. Because you know what the Raiders normally do? They go after the big name. They go after the big fish. They go after the pretty, uh, they, 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 go, they go shopping for the Maserati with, with Honda money. That's what they normally do. But they changed it this time. They said, you know what? We're going to change. We're going to do it differently. We're going to listen to the players. Max Crosby was on record as saying, if you do not hire him, As the head coach, that being Antonio Pierce, Long Beach Poly Zone, I always give that shout out because first place I laid my head when I got my first apartment after living in a hotel out here in Los Angeles in Hollywood, my first apartment was a beach apartment on East First Street down in Long Beach. I used to go to the Cal Poly games on Friday night. I used to be able to walk down there, sometimes catch the bus. It's a dangerous neighborhood. You don't want to be walking around there too many times, but I used to show love to Long Beach Poly. Antonio Pierce, this is a change for the Raiders. This is a good change because the players want him. The fans want him. Most sports media thinks it's the right move. It's the right way to go. That's a good change. He made a change when he took the job. How many interim coaches take a job in the NFL and bench the starting quarterback? Go ahead. I'll let you guys look that up. Hit me in the comments here or follow me on my social media, Big Vanilla Funny on my IG, Big Vanilla Funny on Twitter. Find it for me. When when does a guy make a, a, an interim coach make a change? at the quarterback position once the main guy gets fired. He made a change right away. He made a change on defense. He told Crosby, you hold down the front. But he went to his middle linebacker and said, I want to build my defense around you. I did, we already know Max Crosby. That's, a, that's an all-pro guy right there. But I need, my, I need the quarterback to be in the middle, middle linebacker. 
You know what I'm saying? Ray Lewis, Mike Singletary. I need that right there. I need I need that looking around. You in the middle. They're calling out the mic. You're calling. They're calling you the mic. You're looking around. You're making your calls to the defense alignment, to, to the linebackers, even letting the corners know what's up. That was a change that Antonio Pierce made the minute he was named the interim head coach. And then the front office said, okay, well, this guy made a change. We're going to do it differently. We're going to make a change too. The New England Patriots. Made a change. Now, I don't know if this is going to be good or bad. We'll hold off on that. But I am happy to see Gerard Mayo get the starting job there, the head coaching job, as the new head coach of New England Patriots. First African-American coach they've ever had in their uh, franchise there. That's a big change, especially in that area. If you've ever been up there, and I lived up there. I worked for LA Fitness and Walpool, which is about 15 minutes from Gillette Stadium. They needed a change up there, and they got it. Now, we'll figure out which way it's going to go as the years go on. But it was another change that Bob Kraft saw that he needed to make, and he made it happen. So there's a new coach up there. Now, will it be a change of philosophy? Are they going to make a change at the quarterback position? I don't think Mac Jones is good anyway. I told you guys he was trash when he was at Alabama. Every quarterback looks good at Alabama. Up until recently is when he started getting them into the NFL. But if you go through the years, man, it's been forever since – Alabama had a successful quarterback in the NFL. But they made a change in New England. They're going to have to make some new changes there also to on the offensive side of the ball. Bill O'Brien is now left. He is going to be the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. There's another change that Ohio State's making. This is the time of change right now, guys. You look around the NBA, there's some changes that need to be made on some teams. And later in the show in our last segment, I talk more NBA. I'll let you know exactly where that is. But change is good. You either are going to adapt or you're going to perish. Another franchise who didn't make a change were the Chicago Bears. Everybody in their mama's mama's baby daddy thought that Eberflus was gone. He was done. Finito, stick a fork in him. That steak is ready. You can take that off the grill and slice that down, put it next to some asparagus and some sweet potato, and we good to go. We ready to eat. No, nah, they said, no, nah, we're, we're not going to make that change. It might make a change at the quarterback position because now there's a report out that Cliff Kingsbury, mad scientist, mastermind offensively in college and was the head coach before he was fired of the Arizona Cardinals, looks like he has set everything that I'm seeing here and being reported is set to take the offensive coordinator job for the Chicago Bears, which means with the number one overall pick, they might be looking to make a, let me see what's the word I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. A change at the quarterback position. I feel for Justin Fields because I think Justin Fields can be the guy, but Caleb is sitting right there at SC. He is probably going to be the perennial number one overall pick. Most people think he should be. He is in love and vice versa with Cliff Kingsbury. It feels like to me this deal was kind of quiet, quiet, wink, wink when they didn't fire Eberflus because they're like, okay, we'll keep you. You work the defense, you do what you got to do, but we got to get an offensive guy in here in case we decide to stay with Justin Fields or if we're going to move off of Justin Fields and trade him and actually go ahead and stay at number one and take Kayla Williams from the DMV and WCAC Gonzaga High School doing this thing out there where I'm from when he was in high school before he went to Oklahoma, then transferred to USC to be with Lincoln Riley. So there's going to be a change there at the quarterback position, I feel, but they didn't change the head coach. They just found somewhere else that they need to change. Sometimes in life, you may not have to change where you live. You might have to change where you go, where you hang out. Or sometimes you don't have to change where you go and where you hang out or where you work. And you might have to change where you live. Change is prevalent in life and in sports. And if you don't do it, if you're going to be so stubborn and I don't like these new cell phones and I don't like social media and I don't like NIL, oh, God, everything's changing. Yes, everything's changing. Is it always good? No. But do I like that I could check my email on my phone while I'm sitting in the dentist waiting to get seen? Yes, absolutely. That was a change that happened in society. I couldn't do that 10, 12 years ago. I'd have to wait till I get home. Oh, I sent you an email. Somebody called me. I sent you an email. Da, da. I got to wait till I get home. Now, all of a sudden, I didn't got the email late. I didn't miss what I was supposed to do. And now that things have changed, we can move more frequently in life and and sports. So that's going to be the word of the day. We'll dip more into that talking about change. And speaking of change, 
There could be a new Super Bowl champion this year. That might change the NFL. When we come back to VJ7, I said, I'm going to give you guys the best, the deepest division around playoffs that you have seen all week long. All that and more coming up here on Infinity TV. VJ said what I said. Hey, everyone. I'm Neko Gumike with the LA Sparks, and you are watching Infinity Television. <laughs> A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. What's good, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to VJ Said What I Said on Infinity TV. Once again, also, don't forget to hit me up on my social media, The Big Vanilla Funny on IG, The Big Vanilla Funny on Twitter. Even though I might get off of Twitter, Twitter's starting to remind me of what Facebook used to be. And I haven't been on Facebook in three years because it just it felt like it was just too much. A lot of negativity, man. And sometimes you get people who sprinkle a little voodoo on, on your blessings, and I don't need that right now. Things are going pretty good for me in my life. So let's move on to NFL Divisional Weekend. Big matchups. Of course, they're big matchups because there's eight teams left of the 32. Uh, some of the better quarterbacks in the league are left. Some of the great head coaches in the league are left. Some of the innovative guys are left. And some young guys that are making a new run uh, in, in their postseason careers right now, especially with the Texans, and we're going to start right there first with the Texans at the Baltimore Ravens. They will lock up tomorrow will be the first divisional game, or excuse me, later today, they will be the first divisional game to lock up today. Vegas has this at about nine and a half. Now, every weekend, there's always big spreads that I don't like to touch. I don't really want to touch this one. I think the Texas defense can keep them in this game. But to me, this, this playoffs of recent years, right? Uh, let's go back. So, recent years. The playoffs have been about Pat Mahomes. The playoffs have been about Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. Josh Apple turnover Allen. He's got 88 of them since 19, uh, since, excuse me, since 2019. Like, so don't, don't come after me, Bills Mafia. The facts are the facts. But I think this year, the playoffs are about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, last summer, if you guys remember, wanted his money. Wanted a new deal. Didn't come back from the knee, the knee injury at the end of the season. Ravens missed the playoffs, and I said back then, this felt like, a, okay, you guys don't want to pay me. You guys want to underappreciate me. You guys are looking to make a change. Okay, no problem. There's no guaranteed money on the table for me right now. I'm not coming back. And he took a lot of heat from my colleagues over at uh, Fox Sports Radio, from people on social media, people in the sports business, media. And he took a lot of heat. But in my opinion... He did the exact right thing. Would you go out there and play with a bum knee and you didn't have guaranteed money? No. Would you go to work today if you were not guaranteed that you were going to get your paycheck in two weeks? No. Many of you wouldn't do it, but you wanted a pro athlete to do it. You wanted him to go out and, you know, win one for the Gipper and, and play, play All-American style and play for the team. and Stop it. Like, this is about money. This is business. 
This is big business. And one of the new the sayings right now on social media in the world is I'm standing on business. Or he's standing on business. Lamar Jackson was standing on business. You got to pay me. I'm the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL, and he is. He may not be the best quarterback in the NFL or, 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 or the, the, uh, the most pure quarterback. He's the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL. He might be one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous NFL player. I like, if I had to put a list together, not in any order, most dangerous guys in the league, L. Jax, Cheetah, Tyreek Hill, who wants some of Debo Samuel, uh, Christian McCaffrey. Those, those, there's more, but those guys, that any given down, any given play, any given game, any given formation, any given opponent, it don't matter. They, you have to watch them play every down. They can go to distance. They can upset. They can injure Sunday real fast on one or two plays a whole game. You got them bottled up for a little while. Next thing you know, gone. You've been, you've been sacking Lamar. He's, he's off a little bit. He's, his passes are short, long, whatever. Maybe an interception. But when you need him the most, gone. Or, no, I'm, I'm not going to run. Boom. Let me, let, me hit, let me hit Zay Flowers. Let me hit Odell. Uh, let, me, let me hit Justice out of the backfield. Let me turn, let me turn and, and hand to Gus and let him power into the end zone. Lamar Jackson, man, this is his playoffs, in my opinion. The beginning of the year, and my Uncle VJ's 117. Yes, we'll go over that in a few weeks. I'm waiting for the season to get close to the end. Probably the show between the AFC and NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, I'll bring in my notepad and I'll revise some of the stuff that I got right. And I'll tell you some of the stuff I got wrong too because I thought Chubb was going to lead the league in rushing. Of course, he gets injured, tears his knee all up. But that was my pick to, to win the Russian title this year. I thought Cleveland had it with uh, Deshaun and Chubb and, and, and Amari Cooper. I really liked Cleveland a lot. And I kind of nailed that. They won 11 games. I missed on a team like Jacksonville. I thought Jacksonville was going to be 12-5. and five. We saw how that ended. But this, to me, is the Lamar playoffs. This game against the Texans is the Lamar game. CJ's uh, uh, up and coming. CJ's the new face. He's the new kid on the block. But Lamar's the guy that's like, yeah, young buck, I respect what you're doing, but I got an MVP. I'm probably going to win my second MVP this year. I, I mean, I, I think it's his. The voting, they, don't, they, they say it doesn't go into the postseason, but if we're just going off the regular season, it belongs to Lamar Jackson. I think maybe McCaffrey or Purdy would come in second, probably followed by Tua or Hill. I, I, Josh Allen may, name may be in there, but it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, it's the old Ricky Bobby, right? If you ain't first, you're last. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't first, you're last. It, it's Talladega Nights in, in my book. That's how I always look at it. Kobe once famously said, we don't hang division banners here. And if you go to crypto or staples, however you still call it, look up. There's no division banners. You go to some of these other arenas, oh, they got every damn division banner they've ever won hanging up. So there's no such thing as second place to some guys. I'm the same way. Did you win or did you lose is at the end of the day. I don't care about numbers or how'd you play. Did you win or did you lose? So I look at the spread. I see nine and a half. Over under is at 43 and a half, which Vegas has it. I think that they think the scoring's down. It's going to be windy, no inclement weather. It did snow back east already earlier this week, so I think that's already gone through and passed through. Could be cold and chilly. Baltimore is not a freezing town. It, that's normally around February. It gets a little windy, gets a little freezy with the uh, wind coming in off the uh, off the harbor there. But I don't think it's going to get, the weather's going to affect the game. I like Baltimore's defense. I love the way they run the ball. If your last name is Harbaugh right now, that that's who I want as a coach. If you're like, I, I need a coach who last name's Harbaugh right now. I, I mean, the guy's just, he's already won a Super Bowl. He's a perennial, the Ravens are perennial playoff contenders and championship contenders when they have Flacco. And then you get, bring in Lamar. Same thing, don't miss a step. He won the Super Bowl with Flacco, beating his younger brother Jimmy Burgers and the San Francisco 49ers down in New Orleans for his Super Bowl win here. But there are some numbers here I want to throw at you guys that can be a little alarming. It really makes me think that I like the Texans to keep this game close. I don't think they win. I definitely think they cover the nine and a half. Now, if you guys are into betting, there's an alternate bet that I found earlier today that I really, really like, and it's Texans plus three. It's at a plus 243 on the board right now. So 100 bucks gets you almost 400 back. That's a nice Sunday off of one game. And if you do well on some parlays and some other things, you know, betting on the weekend, you, you can make some money there. But five and two against the spread. 
is the Houston. So they, I think they definitely cover this uh, nine and a half. Last seven games, five and two for the Houston Texans against the spread uh, also here. But another alternate spread I'll give you guys here that I think is really juicy. If you believe Baltimore, it's going to blow them out. Like the Baltimore we've seen the second half of the season that's running through teams. If you think they're going to blow them out, to me a blowout in the playoff game is 17 or more. It's not two touchdowns, not 14. Okay, that's the two-possession game. Three-possession game, I, I think at that point, because even two point two two-point conversion is only 16. You're still down one. Three-possession game in the playoffs, uh, depending upon where you're at in the game, game over. So I found 17 for Baltimore. It's at a plus 210. So if you like that, if you like a blowout, if you're thinking, if you're a guy that's like, man, Baltimore's going to blow them out. Baltimore's going to run all over them. Baltimore's going to crush them. Then I like that bet for you right there. Quick sidebar with some players. I just think that Baltimore has the better weapons. I do love Nico Collins, what he's been doing with C.J. Stroud, even Singletary at the running back position, Dalton Schultz at the tight end. But losing uh, Tank Dell was huge for Houston. And 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 listen, let's 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 get real. Houston was gifted by the Colts to end the year, but last week that defense back to back pick sixes and then the strip sack fumble. The following series, there's three straight drives. The Browns turned the ball over, and the defense scored twice for the Houston Texans. Game over. That game was over. Shell shock for Uncle Flacco. Listen, when, when you owe, you can go to the YMCA and win a couple of pickup games. But as it goes on, the, the young buckaroos, the little young whip, whippersnappers, the little young mush mouths out there, so, sooner or later, the younger legs take over. It's, it, football's a young man's game. So old guys can play. But it's still over time, sustainability, it's a young man's game. And that defense for the Texans showed that. I don't think they replicate that. I love Lamar to come out hot. I think Lamar knows that the target's on his back. I think Lamar's playing with a chip on his shoulder this year. He got his money. When he got his check, my older brother texted me immediately. I mean, he got his deal. My older brother texted me immediately and said, okay, now let's see what he do. He's always been a Lamar hater. He's always been against Lamar Jackson. I'm like, all right, well, we'll see. I like them to win this game. I'm not sure they covered a the nine and a half. I like 31 to 24, 23, maybe in that range right here. 10 points is it, it's real. It's kind of big for me. But the Ravens could blow the, the doors off and really open this thing up. The one thing that I do worry about C.J. Stroud is he's going to see a defense he hasn't seen before. He's going to see schematically – schemes, coverages, um, uh, the Ravens showing looks and then backing out but dropping different guys out. They'll walk seven up in the box and drop two linemen out into the flats and hit you with two linebackers rushing. The offensive line has got to be able to keep up with that. Laramie Tunsil, a left tackle, is an all-pro guy, is a pro baller, but the rest of that line is still kind of young, even though they're good and they've meshed well together. I think the defense for the Ravens at home, it's been a cute story for the Texans. They have something to build off of. Will Anderson, D'Amico Ryans, um, a CJ Stroud, Nico Collins, Tank Dale comes back next year. They got, they, they, got, they got some weapons out there that can build off, but I don't think they get out of this game. My favorite game of the weekend is Packers and Niners. That's my favorite game tonight is the Packers and the Niners, just simply because of the history between the two programs. Simply because I, I really want to see can Brock Purdy win a play. Like, can he really carry this team? They, they got rid of Trey Lance. You brought in um, Christian McCaffrey before the trade deadline. You do it again with Chase Young. You got Bosa. You have this defense. Uh, Ward at the linebacker position. They, there are so many uh, beasts, I'll say it that way, on this San Francisco roster, top to bottom. But this Packer team, something, something about them enamors me. I, and I don't, and I, I don't know what it is just yet. But watching them not just whoop Dallas, they kicked their ass. Like they put it to Dallas last week. That game was done. It's twenty-seven to nothing. Game set match. Thank you for coming. Drive home safely. S'il vous plaît. Okay, that's th uh, please for French. That's French, please. That, thank you know. Thank you. Please, please drive home safe. <laughs> that's what that game was. Jordan Love, he he's legit. If you're telling me Brock's legit, if you're telling me Brock Purdy's legit with all the weapons have, you can't tell me Jordan Love's not. They don't mess up early in games. There's a lot of familiarity with Lafleur and with Shanahan. Shanahan's got the better team, but I really like the front seven of Green Bay, mainly Rashad Gary, Michigan. 
He can put pressure on you. He's going to get a sack. I think I I got this down to Rashawn Gary. There you go. 0.25 sacks is at a plus 135. He's getting a sack on. I, I, I think he sacks Purdy one time. So that's at a plus 135. You want to make you some money there. Take 20 bucks and throw it over there with a parlay. Find you some other player prop parlay. Make you some money on that right there. Rashawn Gary, below one sack again. Oh, yeah, that's all day in a playoff game. I like the way they run the football. When you look at Aaron Jones, three straight 100-yard games for a fourth, 100 straight, a fourth straight 100-yard game instead of plus 320 right now. You can make you some money right there with another parlay. I really do like this team. They don't beat themselves. They don't mess up in the first quarter. They don't basically, they don't give you the game. They're not going to hand you the game. You're going to have to beat this team. And coming off of a road win in Dallas, shocking the world like that. You see the fans when the camera be panning to the fan. You see Jerry Jones in the box looking around like, what the hell is going on? When you start to see stuff like that, you know you got something going. And there's also this sense of they're young. They really are. They're, they're young. Youngest team in the playoffs. Yeah, a lot of young guys, man. Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, like they, they got some guys. They got some dudes. And you still got a veteran running back in Aaron Jones. I think you run the football. You stick with running the football. You work off some play action. If the offensive line, which is good in Green Bay, if the offensive line can really stand up, I think they definitely they have a legitimate shot to go out here and pull the upset over under 50 and a half points. Vegas thinks it's going to be some scoring. I'll take the over there. If you just want to take the Packers on the money line, it's a plus 340. I'm taking the Packers here. I, I really am. I, I, I got to. I, I don't want to go chalk. I, that's easy, guys. Everybody could go chalk and then brag next week. Oh, I, I, I won. I told you. Somebody's getting upset this weekend. We didn't get that last weekend. No NFL playoffs goes chalk. Give me the Packers here. We all know the, the Niners stats and numbers and players and stuff, guys. We, we talk, So many people talked about that. We haven't talked a lot about the Packers. That's why I fed you a lot of Packers stuff here. Uh, two more quick games. Bucks and the Lions. Give me the Lions because they're at home, but they are talking a lot of trash. They're talking a lot of junk here, but they got some studs. This is a real good field story, uh, a feel-good story for the NFL because the Lions have been what they've been for so long. I like the Lions here. It's a um, uh, the spread. I'm, I'm sorry, spread six and a half, six and a half points. Um, I like them to cover that. I think they cover seven points at home. They got a lot of weapons on offense. The Bucks have had a great year. They overachieved. I think they overachieved and stops. Give me the lines here at home. I think they covered the six and a half. This is the one team that I believe covers. I like the lines that cover here. Golf, St. Brown, 1,500 yards. Gibbs, Montgomery. I don't know if Laporta's playing. I haven't checked on that yet, but Laporta has been banged up. This defense is aggressive. They're taking out players' knees. They got Matthew Stafford's running up to them, calling Joseph dirty as you know what. You guys have seen the clip by now. Give me the lines here. And then the Chiefs and the Bills. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't give a damn about this game. I don't because I can't stand either one of these quarterbacks. I'm being honest and real with you guys. I can't stand either one of these quarterbacks. These are the two biggest flopping crybaby quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. Two guys you can't tackle. It's like when LeBron flexes but then flops. You can't do both. You can't have it both damn ways, man. So if I had to take somebody here, I give me the Chiefs. I, I, I trust Andy over McDermott. That's where I'll go with that. I trust Andy and Mahomes over McDermott and Josh Apple turnover Allen. Also, quick injury. Gabe Davis is out. So they're missing a big-time weapon tomorrow. This is the primetime game. And Tony Romo, he gets the suck-up to his two favorite ones. I might cut the volume off at this game. I could care less who wins this game. I just want to see a good football game. But give me the Chiefs here, ninth-ranked offense. Four team that we're looking like, oh, they're not the same offense. I've said it myself. But when you go and you look at the numbers and stats, they have the ninth-ranked offense. They're a top-10 offense still. So give me Mahomes to make some plays, Kelsey to make some plays. Pachenko, man, talk about a little guy that runs hard. Reminds me a lot of work done. It's for you bad boys right there, for you old heads right there. So that's my playoff picks right there, man, for this weekend, for the divisional round. Hope I can make you guys some money. Y'all check them out. Sit tight. We're going to take a quick break right here on VJ Sale. I said that when we come back, I'm going to do rapid fire where I'm going to go through a bunch of sports topics. And we're going to talk about the end of an era to all of our childhoods for people over the age of 40 in sports. All that and more coming up on Vanity Television. VJ's Sale What I Said. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks, and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs>
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infinity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. What's good, everybody? Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to VJ Said What I Said on Infinity Television. Don't forget to hit me up on my social media. Big Vanilla Funny IG, Big Vanilla Funny on Twitter. And don't forget to go to YouTube and subscribe, guys. Subscribe. It's the new hotness, man. Infinity Television. Trust me what I'm telling you what I'm telling you, baby. And like Biggie Smalls used to say, if you don't know, now you know. All right, so let's get to some rapid fire stuff. This last segment, I'm going to hit you guys all over the map. Because there's some really big things happening in sports. The first thing I want to touch that I told you guys, the end of an era to most of our childhoods, especially if you're over the age of 37, 38. If you're over the age of 37, 38, you're going to really feel where I'm coming from right now. There's a report today that Sports Illustrated looks like that it's going to be closing uh, down and killing its uh, operation forever. They had to lay off over 100 employees. Uh, there was some type of business buyout. I don't know all the business jargon and stuff. A lot of that stuff makes me sick anyway because a lot of times when we think we're changing stuff, we're not making things better. You know, it's making things worse. The NFL tried to change how they so-called protected the quarterbacks, right? You change how we can hit quarterbacks. Change how you can tackle quarterbacks. Change what the uh, roughing the passer is. You guys know how many quarterbacks started in the NFL? You know how many starting quarterbacks were in the NFL this year? 61. 61. There's 32 teams. So that's almost every team but one had to play another quarterback. Now, that's not the number, but there were teams that had to play two, three, Four different starting quarterbacks. But I thought we were protecting the quarterbacks. Let's change the rules. Let's change the, the way you can hit. Oh, we'll, we'll change it. Change isn't always good, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes change is bad. They invented the microwave, right? Then you go read reports that the waves give you cancer. Yeah, warm my food up fast. Yes, it was a good change for quickness and, and, and having things happen more rapidly. But was it really a good change? And I see this in our business. And trust me, listen, I love streaming. I love podcasting. I, I, I've done it all. And that's not a brag. I'm just telling you my story. I've done it all. I've had to write. I've had to stand in line and audition. I was able to make some videos online. I've done radio, TV, called games. Like, I, I've done it all. But this goes back to the old school. Sports Illustrated? What? That was like the first time... I saw Christopher Reeve in a, in a wheelchair. Superman can't walk? What? Lord rest his soul. R.I.P. to Christopher Reeve, the real Superman. Not none of these dudes they get today. They look like them, but you're not Superman. You, you got Richard Pryor? You got the girl in the, in the street throwing the, the sword top at you? Superman. Y'all remember that? Like you, you, know, you don't have that. You're not the real Superman. But now you're starting to see there's so many different publishings and so many different internet sources. And, and I, the one change about this business that has not been good, we don't need 24-7 news cycles in sports, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm guilty of it too. I find myself pulling my page down. So the little scrolling thing at the top resets to see if the headline changes. Oh, did we sign him yet? Did we get him yet? Did they get? There was a time when you had to wait. Sports Illustrated used to come in Virginia at Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, we got the Sports Illustrated. My older brother got the uh, subscription. He used to get mad at me because I got home before him from school, and I would take it out of the mailbox. It was one of the constant fights we used to have in my house. Is V got my Sports Illustrated. He tell my mom on me. But Sports Illustrated was it. You needed the Sports Illustrated. The classic covers of Sports Illustrated. Two of my favorite, take that. You guys remember that one? Charles Woodson hitting David Boston. David Boston being turned upside down. Michigan back in 97, knocking off Ohio State. I'll give you another one. Robbed. You remember that cover? That's Sweet Pete Pernell Whitaker throwing that left jab, that left straight at, um, at Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya lips all crazy with the mouth, with the mouthpiece, and he got out, he got out and lost that and lost that fight. The the headlines on the magazine for Sports Illustrated, robbed. Take that. The Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, the best one ever, is still the oldest one ever. Tyra Banks, baby, stop playing with me. I, Ashley Graham's was nice, but Tyra Banks started it with the pink polka dot. Come on. Sports Illustrated. Looks like that something like that is going away from our childhood, man. And it just it 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 just lets me know where we're changing in the business. Change isn't always good in this business. Look at the TV shows. The TV shows now, everybody that knows me knows I've been a big proponent of. We got to change the debate style TV show. I like this. Give guys a mic. Maybe put them with a co-host. Cool. If you don't need one, that's fine. I know sometimes they have a guy sitting off to the left or the right, and they go to them and let them do their segment. But let's get back to just regular sports. Why are we yelling and screaming at each other? Why do we got to pick a side? Why do I have to have a GOAT? Why can't I just say LeBron and Jordan and Kobe were all great in their era and what they had to play with and play against in the rules and it's cool. Why, why can't I like Joe Montana and Tom Brady? Why do I have to pick? That change, I've been against that for the longest. That wasn't a good change. And this is not going to be a good change either. Some people still read, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not always on a Kindle or a tablet. I like a book. I take a book on a plane. I take a book to the beach. I take a book to the park. I take a book to the doctors because I don't know how long I'm going to be waiting. They tell me my appointment's at 2 o'clock at Kaiser. I don't know if I'm going in at 2 o'clock. I ain't never went in on time, so I ain't going to sit here and scroll on my phone. Might as well grab that book that I started a week ago and might as well get a chapter, a half a chapter. People still read. I still like a good newspaper on Sunday morning on my Sunday breakfast. USA Today. I used to like that one as a kid because it was in color. But I grew up on the Washington Post, Kornheiser, Will Bond. I didn't know what they looked like until P.T. Yacht was invented. But I read their columns all through my childhood. Taking Sports Illustrated away from this business and the ability for us to just sit and still read good journalists, good journalism, good media people, they don't have a biasness. They just love to write and cover the sport and the games that they do. That has now gone away. And that was something that I saw today. I was like, man, that, that hit a brother. No more Sports Illustrated? Oh, my goodness gracious, man. What's next? You going to take away highlight shows? You going to take away newspapers? You already took cabs. You already took the taxi away. I used to ride cab from back east. We, we call a cab in a heartbeat. We take a cab on a date. Could you imagine taking a cab on a date today? Oh, my God. They don't even want to go. People don't even want to go to Cheesecake Factory. I tell you, you better take your ass to Cheesecake Factory and give me that miso salmon or that orange chicken and hush, eat some of these egg rolls and give me that key lime pie uh, cheesecake on the way out the door to take home. I'm going to get a few forkfuls while I'm there, though. But I can't eat that all right there. That's rich. Change ain't always good. Sports Illustrated, it's over. This business changing. That part of it to me is a good. All right. Cam Newton is in the news lately, too. This is something that I saw yesterday. There's a little beef going back and forth between him and Jason McIntyre, which is a gentleman that I know. In the business because Cam called a certain amount of quarterbacks game managers. They're not game changers. And since then, people have tried to attack Cam on the personal. And I'm with Cam on this because I really do. I hate that myself. Just because I give an opinion that you don't like or that's unpopular, that don't mean you got to pull out my personal life. We're talking about the sport. I did a show last weekend with Mr. Kerry Rhodes, who's a former All-Pro safety for the New York Jets. And I sat on live radio and told him, and I've told older guys this I've done radio with. My favorite people to do sports talk radio with are former players and old guys. Old guys have the best stories. 
The best, the best story. Especially when they're in like their 60s, late 50s, early 60s. Oh, God. They got some great stories. Because they've been doing this for 40 years. So they've sat next to the great of the greats. And some of them come from working from different leagues. I sat next to a guy who told me he was sitting next to Al Davis. The day Al Davis picked up the phone to call Bo Jackson and tell Bo Jackson he was drafted and he was working for the Razor and an assistant. He said he told me to sit down really quick because he wanted to tell me something. But before, let me make this call real quick. That, where the hell do you get that story from? You're not getting it from no 30-year-old. You're not getting it from a 40-year-old. You got to get that from an old guy. Former players, they'll keep it a buck with you. There's this running thing right now with Kobe, right? A lot of former players are starting to speak out against the media, ambush, and, and push down to Kobe Bryant to elevate, elevate LeBron. A lot of people are starting to come out like, whoa, 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 hold up. I played against the guy. Okay, Grant Hill said, and Grant Hill played against Jordan, and Jordan is prime. He said the hardest guy I ever had to guard was Kobe. I didn't know what to do with him. He didn't say that about Michael Jordan, but that's not the dumb down Michael Jordan. He's just telling you how great the Black Mamba was. I didn't know what to do with him. Iman Shepard tells a story where he's getting in Kobe's ass. He's busting Kobe. He's doing his thing on Kobe. And at the beginning of the fourth quarter, he said they break, they they come from the bench, come out to the floor to start the fourth quarter. He said Kobe walks up to him and said. You had a good game today, man. He's like, hold on, what? I think it's still a fourth quarter. And Kobe goes for like 18 or 20 in the fourth quarter. Lakers come back in. It's, it's, you hear that? I want to talk to the players. So with Cam Newton, when that man speaks 15 and one in one season, went to a Super Bowl, won an MVP, was an all-pro player, was a pro, perennial all-pro, was, a, was a, a, a pro baller, I'm listening to him. I'm not listening to somebody that's covered the game tell me what quarterbacks are. I'll listen to the guy that actually played the position. He went through training camps. He was in college. Not only did he win the Heisman at Auburn, he won a national championship at Auburn. He also won what would be the Juco Heisman at Blaine College and went undefeated at Blaine College and won their national championship. You guys forget that he was a recruit to the University of Florida when, when Tebow and all those guys were there. It was him and Tebow that were going to fight for next after Chris Leak. Cam is that good. Cam is that guy. Yes, yeah, 60% completion percentage. 32,000 passing yards. I mean, the seven, over 70 rushing touchdowns. How the hell can you tell this man that you, you want to pull his numbers because he's telling you Dak's a game manager? What did Dak look like last week against the Packers? He looked like a game manager. He wasn't a game changer. Mahomes is a game changer. Lamar Jackson is a game changer. Brock Purdy is a game manager. But there's nothing wrong with game managers. Tua Tagovailoa of my beloved Dolphins. I am now honest and open to say he's a game manager. He's not a game changer. That's fine, but that's why you got to put a Tyreek with him. And you got to put a Jalen Waddle with him. And you got to put a Mostert with him. But that, that's okay. You got to have players if you don't have a game changer at the quarterback position. So Jason McIntyre goes at him and pulls up his stats and compares him to Dak, which is crazy. Because what is Dak's won one playoff game, I believe, right? Last year against Tampa, they go on and beat Tom Brady. Tom Brady's last game. Cowboys go in there on the road and win that game. Dak, Dak's, Dak's not close to Cam Newton. Cam Newton has every right. Dak was at Mississippi State. Dude, tell me, tell me the big play you remember from Dak in college. Go ahead. I'll give you a full week. We'll come back here next, next Saturday morning. You tell me what it was. So when I see things like this, I got to call it out, point it out. I'm with Cam on this. I didn't play in the NFL. I played football, and I was a ball. I was a beast. No matter what high school I went to, my mother was in the military. Whenever we transfer around, whenever I walked on the field, it was a practice or two before I was a starter. In, my, in the record shows, I had the receipts. I got the varsity letters and pins. I never made it to the NFL. That's fine. I can still talk the game, but I will take a backseat to a guy that played on Sundays. I will ask him. I had Kerry Rhodes on Fox Sports Radio last week as my co-host. When my regular co-host was on vacation, I asked him, what did it feel like, Kerry? To, to, to tell us, talk to, talk to us as the fans. What does it, what, what, what happens in your head when you're getting ready for a playoff game? Hey, what, what happened when you played the Patriots and they broke the huddle? And the big linemen come up, and they get down. And as they get down in their stands, that number 12 kind of comes into your vision. Tom Brady, what, what went through your – a journalist can't tell you that. A TV guy can't tell you that. A radio guy can't tell you that. You know who can tell you that? A guy that played. So if I ask him about another safety, he can say, yeah, he, he was more protected with his linebackers or his corners. Or no, that guy was a dog, VJ. I'm going to listen to him. So I'm going to listen to Cam Newton on this one too. Guys, take a back seat. Another thing of change in this business I'm seeing we need to stop. 
Stop going at athletes like it's going to give you props. I, I'll say what I say about athletes, but to actually try to go at a guy and try to, to say he's not this or that and try to compare him to a guy today or throw numbers up because he gives an opinion once he's done playing. When the guys are done playing, I listen to Ryan Clark. I listen to Randy Moss. <laughs> These guys played. How are you not listening to them, man? So that was something else that just struck me and that I, I wanted to throw out there. I'm with Cam on that. Let's let's stop. Let's stop the Cam back. I'm not. I will. There will be no Cam Newton slander in my presence. Okay. It just was like Krispy Kreme donuts. I don't care about the pink box out here. It's good. I get you. But I'm from the East Coast. We go to Krispy Kreme, and there's one out here in Burbank, and that's why I stay away from Burbank so I can keep fitting in my suit jackets because I'm too in by the time I get to the register. If you go in there hot and they're on, they're on the conveyor belt and the, and the grease frying and they hit them with the stick and flip them over and it goes under the drizzle of the, um, of the glaze, dog, a dozen, I'm too in because it's always a line. I'm too in by the time I get to the register. Um, oh, man, you got uh, how much? Let me get a napkin. Yeah, yeah. Put my, I'm too in. I will take no Krispy Kreme slander. I will take no Cam Newton slander. Let's listen to the former pros. They probably know a little bit more than us TV and radio guys. And that, guess what? That's okay. We don't have to know everything. Nobody's batting a 1,000. Nobody's perfect all the time. I call myself 85-15. I'll take 85%. It's never going to be 100. We're all wrong on some things. NFL coaches, another sidebar I want to throw. The NFL coaches. So Bill Belichick is interviewed for the Atlanta Falcons. He's been down there twice. Harbaugh's also interviewed for them. He's also interviewed for the Chargers. I'm kind of wondering as I sit here on Saturday morning, and I'm wondering, okay, why isn't one? Why why haven't one of these guys been signed yet? I I know this is gonna sound like Michigan homering, but I just I feel like if they just quit playing and put the ten year one twenty five deal on the table for Harbaugh, then why would you leave Michigan? You're gonna revamp. You got players coming back. You got the 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 college playoff expands next year. Michigan's gonna be in the playoff again. That'll be four straight years. They'll be the only school that can say that. They're the only school that can say they went to three. So now they can say we've been to four. And probably the year after that, we've been to five. I give them an out after maybe year two, year three to test the NFL again. But I don't think that Chargers job is as juicy as people think it is. For real. Your quarterback ended the season on IR. You don't have any money. You're way over the cap. Your ownership's bad. You can't draw at home. Have you lived in California? The taxes kill that money, man. You look at that bottom line. Oh, they signed him for this and this. Okay, yeah. Where you living? Oh, Beverly Hills? Westwood? Up. Oh, that's 10 million for your mansion. Oh, where, where, how are you commuting back and forth? Okay, you want to deal with the 4 or 5 and the 5 and the 10 traffic out here? Okay, yeah, go ahead and deal with all of that. You can't draw at home. The Cardinals outdraw the fans at SoFi. Like, seriously, it's not the job everybody's making it seem to be. The Chicago job is the one I thought he really secretly wanted or the Raider job. Well, guess what? Antonio Pierce got the Raider job, and the Bears didn't fire their coach. Dallas didn't fire their coach. Philly's not going to fire their coach. Where are you going if you're Harbaugh? I like Washington, but there's no connections there. Nude ownership. Uh, they got a lot of money. They got some high draft picks. Hey, Magic Johnson and that bond, that ownership group. I, I think that's a great, attractive place. But if I'm there, I think Eric Bieniemy. I think your head coach is already right there in Eric Bieniemy. So I'm trying to figure out how Eric Bieniemy hasn't already gotten his job. And start to move into the offseason. You got to get ready for the, for the combine. You got to get ready for pro days. You know, there's a lot of time. I know you want to talk to some of these other coordinators, but eh, if I'm Washington, I, I think my coach is right there. So if you're Harbaugh in Belichick, like sit like the Falcons, I'm you don't have a quarterback. You don't have a quarterback down there. You blew your first round pick on Pitts a few years ago. He's Kyle Pitts is cool. Is he your legitimate number one? Drake Lennon from USC? He's like this. He's up and down. It's Atlanta. Now, the division's winnable because you have the Saints, which I think the Saints are going to get better. You have the Bucs. The Bucs are playing above their heads. And you have the Panthers. They won one or two games. In one game, one or two games this year. I mean, the division's winnable. But at the end of the day, I, I, if I'm Harbaugh, I'm, I'm staying. I, I'm, I'm staying in, uh, in, uh, in Michigan. And then the Seattle job is open. And we're trying to figure out. The, the GM comes out and makes this big speech about what he wants to do and the type of coach he has. And everybody goes, wow, didn't you just have that type of guy? And you let him go. So also Pete Carroll's name's out there too. Where is he going to go? So some great coaching questions that have not been answered 
two weeks after Black Monday, I, 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 like I said, I think something. I don't think we have that big coaching move. Now, if Harbaugh takes the Chargers job, that's the easy guess. I'll go out on a limb right now. On VJ said what I said here on Infinity Television, I will tell you Harbaugh's not taking the Charger job. I just don't think it's juicy enough. They don't have the money to pay him. You can't just give him a blank check. It does not work that way. I think maybe you bring in a younger offensive mind, and maybe you can even promote uh, the, the offensive coordinator that you stole from Dallas. But the Dallas offense got better after this wonder kid left. So a lot of change coming in the NFL. A lot of change coming in college football. Already had with some coaches moving. And life is about change, man. You either adapt or you'll perish. And we're going to find out which one of these teams are going to adapt, they're going to perish. Divisional uh, weekend for the playoffs. New coaching, coaching uh, openings. We'll find out what happens when I come back with you guys and we lean back up next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. here on Infinity Television. I want to thank you all for participating, watching, enjoying it. You guys all kiss and hug your loved ones, man. God bless and always remember, be good. And if you can't be good, at least be good at it. Peace.